All right. How's everyone doing? Holy frame rate. Alright, picked up. I should get something to drink. Hi, hi chum. This rate, I'm gonna pull enough germas to rainbow them before they get their level limit break. Why keep germa dupe? Uh, because they're driven. So maybe they could be used on a buggy team, but probably not. Uh, wishful thinking. Potential buggy sub. Uh, who else did I pull? Zoro. Need three more dupes of Zoro. About that amount for Germa, too. did I get? Log Luffy. That's right. Two away from 150. Zoro is good for PvP for slashers. Yeah, if I had good slashers. I have decent slashers, but I'm missing, like, 
one or two that would make it really good. Actually, no, I'm missing a lot now, considering the new legends that came out. I can make a decent slasher team using a lot of the 6 plus dual units. And like, Roger Newgate. That's probably one of my better slasher teams. The Shanks crew, Inu Neko, Cavendish Barto are all really good for slashers. Zoro's PvP special. Point seven attack. Oh, that's level one. The heck? What the heck just happened? Like, did not register my taps at all. Two point six, level seven for seven for twenty seconds. Yeah, it's decent. But his cooldown being 33 is kind of rough. Let's see. Is your cooldown? 31, yeah. Because ideally you want... I haven't even leveled you up, oh boy. You'd want Zoro to like, be one of the first people who attacks. But his cooldown is too long. Like, 28 on Cavendish Barto. So. Because 20 seconds in PvP is not a lot. For a level 7 attack buff. You're probably not going to be given a lot of opportunity to use it. Unless, what's Roger the Beard's cooldown? It's shorter than Roger, it's not even as short as Roger Whitebeard's. Yeah, it needs to be a lot shorter. I think it should be like 30. Zoro Special has a really high cooldown. If it was somewhere in the 30s, it would be much better. Yeah, I need to play with defense teams more, because how defense teams are currently working is just get good, get a good team and stick it on defense. But I want teams that are specifically good for defense, like the cerebral healing team would be really funny to play with, but too bad we're getting all free spirit units this uh, anniversary, so... How many anniversaries in a row have we gotten Free Spirit Legends? Let's see. Rarity? Uh, super. So this year we got it. Last year we got it. Uh, right by ID. There we go. Yeah, this year we got it. Last year we got it. Uh, the year before we also got it. And then what was the anniversary before? Uh, super type? Was that the dual unit one? Because I guess the dual unit one doesn't technically have a free spirit lead with um, Law and Luffy. Even Kizaru is useless now in slasher teams. Uh, depends. In some slasher teams, his cooldown is so low that you basically get to use his special every time his attacks. He attacks because in Rumble, um, you get a lot of cooldown reduction. So, come we didn't turn into Glitch Laris. Uh, I would have done the glitch. I'm gonna be honest. 
Um, I would have 100% done the glitch. Uh, I just wanted to stream it. So I didn't do it. And then Bandai saw it and said, mm, we're gonna fix it. <laughs> His level limit break increases just one attack in a special. Yeah, some of the old 6 plus level limit breaks are really bad. It's like Chopper and uh, Shanks crew, where their level limit break basically doesn't do anything for them. Saved over a year for this moment. I haven't saved for over a year. I've saved for close to a year. In like two months, I'll have saved for a full year. I'm pretty sure. Whenever they do their summer events. Saved over a year just for the game to be like, mm, no, you don't get to have nice things. Will treasure map be fun? No. Will Kizuna be fun? No. Pirate King Adventure unironically was the most fun thing this month, but that's because everything else was awful. And Pirate King Adventure's drops were terrible. Like, the entire game mode... I don't know why Bandai's making everything super difficult. What am I supposed to do with 3k turtles a month? 3k turtles that are really, really not useful. <laughs> It takes 1.5k to 150 a unit if you have only the Teenage Dynamo, uh, Daimyo Turtles. A whole two characters, 150 the month. Wow. And Himes. I mean, if you're lucky enough to get some Himes, sure. But you're only guaranteed Teenage Turtles. The only redeeming part is you can read, feed them in stacks greater than 50. Yeah, you only need two feeds. No, you can feed 999 of the rainbow turtles. You can feed up to 999. You can't feed more than 1,000. Or 1,000 or more. I don't know why there's a limitation on normal turtles. It's been there since it was changed. And then Bandai was like, we're never changing any other part of this system ever again. So, here we are. How much is Hime's for 150? The colored ones, 400. The rainbow ones, I think it's like over 100 still. Or it's like 75 or something insane. Like, it's a lot. I think it's 75. Because I think it's 2 million per. So every 25 would be 50 million. And then you need 150 million for 150. So it should be 75. Unless I'm misremembering. you get really lucky with Himes, you're probably not going to 150 too many characters. 
Give me a rare crit and free to play. Yeah. Uh, every unit takes 150 million EXP to get from 99 to 150. And then free to play units use rare recruit, limit break, expansion keys, and some free to play units use two keys to get a tiny upgrade. Two whole keys for a tiny upgrade. And we get like two keys a month. And that's maximum. There's no renewable infinite way of getting keys. I don't know. Pirate King Adventure is like one step forward, two steps back. It's a interesting game mode. It is a interesting medium. It's just the difficulty spikes way too hard for something that's supposed to be for new players. Uh, there's no way to backtrack levels. So if you accidentally beat something, then you're stuck there. Good luck. I'm sorry. Good luck. Like you can't do anything and you can easily accidentally kill something. If you have all the utility, but none of the damage, there are ways to still beat something on accident, which I think is hilarious. Like none of the buddies are like, oh, we'll reduce buffs and debuffs by one turn. Like <laughs> all your uh, debuffs and all the enemy buffs will just reduce it by one turn or two turns or three turns. There's no buddy that does that. It's just, we'll boost your damage and cut their health. All you need is Tandem 5 Friend Captain, doubles damage compared to Tandem 1, sometimes even more than double. You can get some nutty damage. So. And then whoever designed Uta 6 Plus apparently also designed Zoro, where they're like, what if he got weaker? <laughs> And he had a awful garbage captain ability of a 2x attack boost. What if he had a 2x attack boost? If he can't beat 135, 150 is out of sight as well. Yeah. That's true. I mean, they released Zoro just in time for people to try him out on ulti. I'm sure there's going to be at least one person trying him out on ulti. Just to see his uh, damage limit interaction. Such a dumb system. I really dislike that they did that. Why not? Why not give him a limit break that reduces damage limiter on enemies or a special that reduces damage limit by two turns or something nice? Like, why build it into his kit that he just lets you deal 2x the damage limiter? Because that's such a weird, arbitrary... I don't know. It's so weird to me. Because you're not giving him utility. Because I'm pretty sure you still need him as a captain to do that or something. Well, I need to do this database update today. I mean, I guess this is what happens when Bandai decides that quality of life updates aren't worth doing anymore. Because it's been over a year and a half now since our last full-on just quality of life update existing features update. 
everything since then has been, we're doing something new, so we're changing the old stuff to fit the new stuff. It's never been, we need to change this old stuff because it's bad. And I gotta check my NDA, because my NDA is going to expire soon. Which means I will probably be kicked out of being a Bandai spy. So, <laughs> laid off. Can't even be laid off when it's a contract that terminates automatically. <laughs> it's like, this contract will self-destruct after one year. I should double check. In fact, I think I have the file on my computer right now. No, I don't. On my email, though. Wonder what really happened for all the communication to die off. Uh, I'm guessing Yannicka was told that she is going to be moved to a different project. Uh, I haven't been looking at Dragon Ball Legends all that much, so I don't know if uh, that's what she's been doing lately, because that's what Nick was doing. Nick was doing Gundam at the same time as he was doing OPTC, and then they were like, all right, get off OPTC, just do Gundam. And that was when Nick was, like, having to, like, change his role as a community manager for OPTC. So, I don't know. Could be something like that. Because, yeah, I haven't gotten a lot of communication with Yannicka, unfortunately. I personally feel like a lot of the issues I've tried to bring to light and presented kind of got brushed under the rug. I don't know. I I feel like I wasn't heard. So. It's nice to have a reason why. Uh, <laughs> everyone found out that Yannicka was leaving at the same time as us. Like, there was no Bandai Spy, like, internal thing. After every event, you post a list of things wrong with it. Yeah. You've told me. All right, let's see. Does this NDA term and termination effective on the effective date and will continue for five calendar years thereafter? Oh, I thought it was one calendar year thereafter. Never mind, I'm still on NDA for another four years. Why'd they give us one two years ago? And then one one year ago. Was the first one a one year one and then this one a five year one? Oh, okay. Cool. Thirteenth anniversary. Yeah, I'm under NDA from Bandai until twenty twenty eight. Or twenty twenty seven. Although I could still get kicked out. Just because I'm under NDA doesn't mean that I'll still be a Bandai spy. I don't know what the new community manager is doing. I don't even know who the new community manager is. Uh, I don't know if they've selected somebody. So, do I think we'll even get one at this point? Honestly, every time we've had a community manager that did stuff with the community, it was always positive. Uh, so, no. 
the official Discord one didn't. There was never an official Discord. Just said some staff will monitor. Uh, let me reread that. Various members of the team will continue to monitor their Discord channel to focus on bug reports and feedback, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So it sounds like, no, we're not going to have a community manager, which probably sounds like the Bandai Namco, or the Bandai Spy thing is probably going to end. That's what it sounds like, at least. Because I don't see the value. I don't even know who would be our handler at that point. So, yeah. Yeah. I can't believe there's like two days left in treasure map and I'm at 4 million. Not even 4. 3.6. To be fair, I did go to a baseball game yesterday. So. I see what you're saying now. The official Discord announcement. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's OPTC right now. switch around some of these supports because I could squeeze an attack boost on this stage too because I'm wasting a support slot on Sasaki why is there no way to quit out of pirate king adventure there is you press the back button in the top left you just want to get to Roger and quit oh yeah once you're at one of those yeah, you gotta load in and then quit and then lose. And then it's like, you dumb idiot. Get better at the game. Each time you die, it's like I died on purpose. Whoops. I always forget to jump Sanji before doing that. Fighting Odin three times in a day for one ticket. Yeah, the drops on Pirate King Adventure are incredibly terrible. I like the game mode, conceptually. But man, the rewards suck. Like, genuinely, properly suck. Have I seen what they did with Kizna boosters? Actually predatory. 
What do they do this time? I haven't looked at all at it. Tickets. Okay. One boost tickets and the other tokens. Okay. Great. Fantastic. The ticket booster might as well be worthless. I mean, the super token booster might as well be worthless. Who would want to run super boss anymore? They said it. The growth rate is intentional. Like, they don't care anymore. They do not. It's like, sorry. But they do not. South Park. I'll play them eventually. There's a lot of games that I want to play. And I have many years to do it. They patched Tears of the Kingdom today. Yeah, they got rid of the dupe glitch. All major glitches that were exploited gone. All of that in just a short period of time. <laughs> Jokes on them, you disabled updates. Yeah, when I get the game, I can just, cause I'm gonna get it physical. Why buy a digital game? Just not update it. <laughs> Easy. Also, it feels like they're kind of stepping in the face of Pokemon because they're like, hey, Pokemon, we can release a game that runs well and also fix all the bugs. Pre launch optimization sucks. Yeah, that's true. I at least need like the day one patch. So, but that's also fine. I don't care. I'm not worried about dupe glitches and stuff. I didn't even abuse the OPTC glitches. Other than 7-Eleven. The glitch for infinite durability Master Sword is wild. Do I speak German? No. There's just some words in English that are the same in German, I think. I mean, I know some German words, but that's about it. I did want to learn German when I was in school, but they didn't offer it. I thought it would have been cool. Instead, I had to learn French. My options were French and Spanish, so I chose French. So I know a little bit of French. French? 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 I know a little bit of French. But not a lot.
Basically, you go to a specific coordinate, make use of a different exploit to drop a huge weapon of your choice, quit out of the game, start a new save state, and run to that coordinate. What a wild requirement for that glitch. You can... The weapon dropped can appear and can be exchanged for the Tutorial Master Sword, which has infinite durability. I see. That's pretty funny. That sounds like some of the glitches in Final Fantasy XII. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. That definitely sounds like they are trying to manipulate a bunch of stuff. Uh, th whoever found that, I mean, good on you. Like, that's wild that you were able to find that glitch. That is such a specific glitch to find. Oh my god, I didn't kill. Can I take two turns to kill you? We'll see. Probably not. Because now I need to take more than two. I can heal more than 10k a turn. Yeah, I don't know what you expected, Queen. I can outheal you. Unless he gets, like, attack up or something. In the game, you can fuse all kinds of materials to enhance weapon damage, but the tutorial sword can't, so they use another glitch to overload the state of the weapon, which allows you to be able to do weapon enhancement. Oh my god. How do you even find that out? These are people who, like... I mean, that's what, like, professional game testers do. Like, professional game testers, like, you'd think it would be like, oh, I run around the map, I try to find places where, like, I get stuck in geometry or something like that. No, professional game testers are like, alright, you give me a game, I will try every which way to inject game code and do this and, like, store stuff in memory and uh, dupe stuff over. Like, it is hilarious what they do to some games. Oh wow, that killed. Nice. But yeah, game testers and like game glitch finders and stuff like that are wild. Although I do miss the old days where cheat codes existed. Like, what's the last game that had inputtable cheat codes? Like genuinely just straight up cheat codes. Because I can't think of it. Any. Other than like the Lego games. And I don't even think the new LEGO games have it. Would I watch Ninjago again? I don't know, maybe. It's a kid's show, but... I don't know. If I could figure out where I last watched it, because I'm not going to start it over. Because the first season was kind of rough. Saints Row. Maybe. The new Saints Row might have had cheat codes. Let's see. Saints Row. Cheat codes. Uh, 2022. Or whenever it came out. Oh my god, it has cheat codes. Hmm. 
you can just call you can just use your phone there's a cheat code that gives you only one thousand dollars that does not seem like a lot of money infinite ammo calls the FBI infinite sprint car and vehicle cheats wow you can spawn every car weather and time cheats that's pretty nice for like youtubers people who want to create content with saints row that's pretty nice wait a second I'm looking at this article and it says Saints Row 2022 cheats full list and then at the bottom it says will the Saints Row reboot have cheats and it says no <laughs> what Gran Turismo cheat codes were discovered the other day after 20 years that's wild that Gran Turismo had cheat codes that no one found for 20 years What was the last scene I watched in Ninjago? I have no clue. I remember that one of them's a robot. And I think everyone had gotten over the fact that he's a robot at this point. So it's well after whenever that happened. But yeah, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. Probably like season three or something. And there's been a lot. Although there's a Lego Ninjago game, maybe I'll just play the game. Pretty sure I even own the game. Ninjago. I do own the game for the movie. How old is this game? 2017. That was pretty funny. So yeah, maybe I'll play the Lego Ninjago game because I do like playing the Lego games. They're cool. Zane? I think so. Man, the Gran Turismo TV show or movie or whatever looks so goofy. It feels like video game high school. <laughs> There's a Ninjago game? Yeah. I assume it's on most consoles, but it's on PC for sure. It's a game for the movie. I'm surprised they haven't done one for uh, the TV show, following like events in the TV show. Because they'll do that for like Indiana Jones. I guess Indiana Jones never had a TV show. They only did his movie stuff. Well, they did a Lego Clone Wars game, but Clone Wars is a popular show, so... It's so funny how now Point Path isn't, like, a waste. Like, I'm going Point Path because I want to play Treasure Map less. It is more efficient for me to go Point Path. Because there's just no value in the chests. It's like, what am I going to get out of a chest? A damage reduction tablet and, like, a training potion. And that's it. Yeah, the Ninjago movie video game. Another stamina refill. Cool. I don't think I've been under 100 stamina at all this entire treasure map. wasted a gem because of tapping Sanji resulting in your death due to the HP cut <laughs> uh, yeah 
Yeah. missed out on the super OP chest spot that for some reason exists. this team that I need to switch out stuff, right? No. Not this team. Next team. Is not is Ninjago one of the most popular Legos? I think it's one of their pop most popular original franchises, yeah. Cause not a lot of Lego franchises have done too well. We still haven't seen a single confirmed ink drop. Are you kidding me? Still? That's wild. I would have expected somebody to get it by now. But I mean, when you have a, like, 20% chance every five runs, I guess it makes sense why we haven't seen it. And that's just to land on the chest, and then it's probably like a 1 in 100 chance to get it out of the chest. So. Makes sense why we aren't seeing any. It's not like it's a 50-50 like any multi-pulls or any pulls after the 8th multi. Not even a single one on Japan. That's hilarious. Dandai's making it extra pay to win. Uh... for uh, Grand Party. <laughs> Either the people who got it aren't active on socials or Bandai nuked the rates. I wonder if I can see those rates somewhere in the DB files that Ryan and Goldie have been data mining lately. How come there's proof of golden tablets but not ink? Yeah, that's also wild. Like, the fact you can get a golden tablet from that chest specifically is nuts. Ninjago's Cartoon Network original? Yeah, but it's made by LEGO. It's a original property owned by LEGO. It's not like Marvel or DC or Batman or any other- or Star Wars or anything else that LEGO makes. It's original to Lego. Like Bionicle and stuff like that. Completely original to Lego.
I'm actually looking forward to the Metal Gear uh, ports that they're doing. That'll be fun once those come out on PC, because they said that they're doing them for PC. It's just uh, PlayStation got the first uh, dibs on announcement. So the players are building a Metal Gear to surpass them all. I know, that's so funny. Seeing Zelda, like, people building contraptions in Zelda gets me so excited. It reminds me of, like, Create Mod in Minecraft and, like, Besiege, the video game. Oh, so much fun. I remember when Besiege came out, I had so much fun with that game. I should play it again, because I think they added a bunch of levels and, like, components you can use now. Stuff like that. Switch's technical limitations mean you can only build things with 21 moving parts. I mean, yeah, they've got to limit it at some point. Even on PC, they would have limited it to something because, I mean, in the same way that options allow for creativity, limitations allow for creativity, uh, which is something OPTC used to know. Yeah, I like the Ninjago TV show. I just haven't watched it in a long time. Like, remember when OPTC had Neo raids that were interesting to build for? Yeah, me neither. How else am I supposed to play Kerbal Space Program? Kerbal Space Program is definitely one of the places where you can just be like, uh, so I added another rocket and now it works. And I don't know why, but I'm just going to roll with it. And that's how I play Kerbal Space Program. Although I've only played the demo. I'm a bad aerospace engineer. I've only played Kerbal Space Program a little bit. Sad the second game seems to be trash since they sold out. Yeah, it doesn't perform very well at all. It looks like. I mean... It... Yeah. Who'd they sell out to? Was it Epic? Or was it somewhere else? I'm surprised if they sold out to Epic that it was bad, because you'd think that using Epic's engine would have been easy, because it's a gravity sim. But it's a hyper accurate gravity sim. Take two acquired them. Interesting. Well, that's why they were Epic Game Store exclusive for a while. Yeah. Man, that's a weird acquisition from Take Two. Kerbal Space Program. I mean, Take Two is. I don't know. Take Two is making a lot of money. Like, their Borderlands games suck, but then they release a better version of their Borderlands games every, like, other model. Because, like, Borderlands 3 was cool, but the story sucked. And then the Dungeons and Dragons game did better. Oh. I don't know. Borderlands pre-sequel did well, Borderlands 2 did well, and then or Borderlands 2 did okay, and then Borderlands 1 did pretty well. Take two is weird. And they also own Rockstar. And Rockstar has been like, let's put out GTA 6 and Red Dead Redemption 2 and not remaster Red Dead 1 or uh, 
Red Dead Rising or support Red Dead Online at all. Like, no Red Dead Online support just killed the entire community. And then they're still doing GTA Online stuff. It's like, come on, man. Just let GTA Online die. And then there's all the 2K games, which I don't think the 2K games will ever die. They make too much money from gambling. Like, it's impossible for those games to ever die. GTARP server drama the other day. Other day? What do you mean other day? You mean for the past three weeks? Yeah, yeah. Hey, what do you expect? You get one uh, GTARP server owner and everyone wants to be the server, of course they're gonna get an ego. Like, imagine being like the flagship streamers or players on that server. It's like you get such an ego boost. An overinflated ego, all that shit. Like, of course that's gonna happen. And then they apparently uh, fired a guy without telling him, told him that he was accessing their, uh, files without authorization because he had been fired, even though apparently he wasn't told he was fired, and then he disappeared from the face of the planet for, like, six months. And no one knew what was going on, and then it turns out he was cooking. Because... Man, that lawsuit looks good for him. That is a pretty solid case that DW has going against Coil. Well, it's a good thing I didn't apply for NoPixel. <laughs> they were going to charge me 15 bucks to apply for NoPixel, so screw that. I'll pass. Oh my god, another Rainbow Queen. to switch out the supports on this. That's fine. Whoops.
I forgot to launch Queen's Captain action. God. Oh, now I need to stall that out. Okay, I'm dead. I'm 100% dead. I'm pretty sure Inu gets an attack boost. So I'm definitely dead. Oh yeah, I'm dead. whatever I don't think I would have won anyways I think I would have been in a cycle of death It's funny how my interest in OPTC is like at its lowest point right when the data mining scene is really picking up for OPTC. Like there's some pretty exciting people doing data mining right now because they make me interested to like collaborate with them and like utilize what they learn in my use of like developing the database and stuff like that like there's a lot of neat things that i can potentially do in the future of like almost completely automating a database update and stuff like that like i'm very close to that point like i could potentially do an automated database update that would have to be followed up by, excuse me by like a revision update but it would be pretty simple all in all why is Blackbeard on this team I could just replace Blackbeard with someone that 
It lets Kaido get his super type off. Er. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised Big Mom doesn't proc Kaido's super type. Why are so many people using this Aokiji?
for Jack. I guess that's... Yeah, I guess that works. It's just interesting that a lot of people are using that strat. I guess he gives you the attack and orb boost and you don't have to worry about getting it. And then he can extend it. Kinda of annoying to remember switching out once. You just super swap with Yamato Ace. I hate swap. I don't know why swap isn't something like... I like the idea that you can gain super swap gauge without actually swapping. But man, the way they decided to do it with Luffy and Yamato... Does not feel... Interesting to use. You can't even get Aokiji's maximum attack boost on this. Because <laughs> you only have three stages, unless you stall. doesn't even give us five turns to charge up captain abilities that require at least five turns. Hello, back button? Okay, apparently my back button isn't working for that screen.
This team looks better now. Am I saving for 20th anniversary? At this rate, I might as well. Yeah. Uh, the idea was that I would save until Bandai puts out a Sugo Fest that really feels good. Um, so yeah. Still saving. And then he, I missed it. Yeah, there was a supposedly a glitch that had existed until this morning that would have given me pseudo infinite 50 50 legend rate. Uh, so I just missed it. Unfortunately. was only like two hours no apparently that bug has existed since uh 50 50 sugo fest which also if we think about that that means that every time bandai gave us a hundred percent red multi-pole in the past because they used to do that if we had just done singles it would have been a hundred percent reds on singles which would have been hilarious. But the consensus is that bug has existed for months and years. It's just no one's really talked about it and no one's really done it. Like it, no one in their right mind would use, would do that intentionally. So a lot of people were like, not really convinced that it was a real thing. And then a bunch of people tested it and then Bandai found out. Yeah. The only way you would do it is if you got to that point and then you were like, I only have five gems. It ends in like 10 days or uh, 10 hours. There's no way I get any more gems to do a full multi. Let me just do a couple single pulls. Like that's re realistically the only way that you would uh, replicate the situation. So. So, yeah. Yeah, like, finding that on accident is pretty unrealistic. I'm surprised nobody... I asked somebody to do it, but nobody did the multis and then looked... Because you can look at the single pull rates. It'll tell you what the rates are for single pulls. I wanted somebody to look at that. No one looked at that. Like, I wanted to see if this was a technical workaround that Bandai just didn't think people would exploit, but I'm guessing it was just a full-on mistake that Bandai never checked.
they gave five gems as a polity, just enough to do a single, yeah. I'm surprised they gave five gems, honestly. I was expecting zero. I was full on expecting zero. Because the last couple of times the Sugo Fest had an error, they were just like, whoops, sorry. Your loss. So. Should have attacked with Marco so I can get another meat orb. Although I don't think it matters. I think I get all block orbs, so. They give us five gems that we can spend on the Zoro banner now. Go ahead, pull for Zoro. We dare you. God. This point gain is so slow. Do I ever get tired of the game? Yeah. Lately I've been getting pretty exhausted with this game. 
Am I out of Sanji friends? I'm out of Sanji friends. Oh no, there they are. Lately the game has been kind of exhausting, like, burnout is definitely real. Get tired pretty often, you just shift between OPTC and Dokkan. Yeah, I normally switch between OPTC and like a single player game. Like, lately we've been trying to play Halo or uh, Yakuza. What did we do before that? Bug Snacks, stuff like that. So that way I don't get burned out too quickly. But OPTC lately hasn't really made the game feel reasonable to like play casually. I really want to play the game casually, but it don't make it easy to play casually. Dokkan is objectively a better game. It's more enjoying playing it and not tired of it. The gameplay of Dokkan I don't care for, but in terms of like how friendly it is for players, like its simplicity is what it excels at. OPTC is not simple, uh, but its gameplay I like a whole lot more. TC is just boring, same stuff, yeah. That's what it's turned into. Every month, there's just the same thing in OPTC, unfortunately. How's Dokkan objectively better? Uh, I don't know. I think Dokkan's better in the fact that you don't have to pull the new uh, LR every month. OPTC has better gameplay that's more thought out. OPTC has an actual game to it. Like, if you took out the gacha elements of Dokkan and OPTC, OPTC would still be a real game. It would just be a card game. Like, that's- or a deck builder roguelike. Like, that's what OPTC would turn into if you took out the gacha element. Something like Slay the Spire or something like that. Uh. But Dokkan, if you remove the gacha element from Dokkan, you get Candy Crush? Maybe? Not really Candy Crush, but something similar to that. You can randomly lose in Dokkan because your character sowed out in the wrong rotation, or because the first hit an enemy does is special and nukes you. Yeah, that seems uh, not good. Yeah, that aspect of Dokkan I would really not enjoy. Because that aspect in OPTC I really hate. All, like when you have random bosses or something. I always hate that. So what, it's better than the repetitive shit OPTC has? I mean, if that's how you feel, that's how you feel. I've tried Dokkan. I'm just not that interested in it. I think Dokkan is just as repetitive, it's just the difficulty is not there. Dokkan is repetitive and easy. OPTC is like easy on both sides. Like everyone's a glass cannon in Dokkan. You either die or get or kill. Like, there is no barely edging by, like, none of that. Like, in OPTC, sometimes you can think your way out of a situation. Uh, Dokkan, it, if you're thinking, you're probably losing. Unfortunately, OPTC is also repetitive. 
so it's straining like it just takes so long like it took me two hours to figure out a team for this fight and I ended up just using a team that basically ignores 90% of the fight so Dokkan can afford to be that repetitive just because their gameplay is simpler stuff like that OPTC pigeonholed themselves into a complicated system that does not work for them because they're just copying the another gacha game that I always forget the name to every week <laughs> It's not Puzzle and Dragon, it's, uh... Yeah, I don't remember the name. For some reason I want to say Grand Blue, but it's not Grand Blue. It's something else. Don't even get me started on Dokkan's Treasure Map. Isn't it called, like, World Tournament or something? I looked at it, and it does not look... ...that interesting. Like, it looks like you just speed through it, and it is not that interesting. Every single run has East Blue difficulty. Yeah, that's what it felt like. I would love if there was something like that for OPTC. Easy mode OPTC? Hell yeah. There's a reason Dokkan gets consistently top 1 grossing and OPTC never gets it. Yeah, it's because of brand power. Dragon Ball is a bigger brand. Uh... OPTC is, uh, people either universally love or hate One Piece. Alright, what am I doing on this stage? that he only binds me for like five turns. Kaido, undeath. Active effects, ability list. And then I have ace on there, so that would be eight turns to five turns to two turns. Okay, cool. I'm good. Is One Piece that far down below? Oh yeah. One Piece sells more, like, chapters, like physical copies, but in terms of like worldwide merchandise, video games, all of that, like, Dragon Ball is hand over foot more revenue than One Piece. Like, easily outpaces One Piece Trader Crews. Or, uh, One Piece, not One Piece Trader Cruise. Like, it is a significant difference. There's a reason why Dragon Ball ended, and then Super came out, for some reason. Um, Jump was like, hey, we want to make more money off of Dragon Ball. And Akira Toriyama was like, yeah, I don't like how GT was. So Super is literally just... Akira Toriyama being like, hey, I want to make a new story, and Shonen Jump being like, I want more money. Like, that's it. Yeah, OPTC is less new player friendly. Dokkan, with how easy it is, of course it's new player friendly. It's simple. Like, that's the beauty of some gacha games, is they're so simple. It, Genshin has two buttons. You have two buttons in Genshin. That's the entire game, is two buttons.
the worst part of Genshin is, like, the whole substat and, like, artifact system. Because it's more complicated than it should be. Being complicated doesn't mean it's good. No, I'm saying being complicated is bad. Being complicated is very bad for gacha games. You want a simple game because it's better for new players and it's better for casual players. It still lets whales, like, enjoy, like, being OP, right? But it doesn't help new players at all. OPTC being complicated is very bad. It is one of the major downfalls. But yeah, the puzzle gameplay of OPTC at its core is interesting and good. But yeah, for a gacha game, it's just not good. Throw OPTC's gameplay and mechanics and engine on a deck building game, like reformat it for a deck building game, and you've got like a like out of the park home run game easily. Like Slay the Spire was a very well received game. And if OPTC can do something anywhere similar to like Slay the Spire or any of those roguelikes, like they would be rolling in a huge player base. The issue is it doesn't make money. Having to repeat it just kills it for you. That's, yeah, that's gotcha games. That's MMOs. That's gotcha games. That just means you like playing gotcha games casually. That's it. And that's okay. You can enjoy gotcha games casually. There's nothing wrong with that. But the MMO aspect of gotcha games is the grind and over planning stuff and having to make spreadsheets to plan stuff out. Like, I don't know how many times I've made a spreadsheet for One Piece Treasure Cruise. I've made at least like two dozen spreadsheets for different things for OPTC. Like, it's ridiculous. What do I think? What do I think about what? I don't think. Are you kidding me? You make me roll a two? Just give me the three. Why why put me on that spot? OPTC has the same outcome and the same path in other games that might be different. What do you mean same outcome, same path? Honestly, OPTC has the same kind of content cycle as like every other gacha game. It's just the difficulty and the complexity of OPTC is in the, is like the big thing that is the issue. What do I think of Dokkan? I played it. It's cool. The art is nice. The animations for like summoning are cool, but the gameplay I just didn't care for. Uh, the match three style of gameplay is kind of boring to me. Dokkan artworks are pixelated. Are they? I guess they're slightly pixelated. But I mean, OPTC stuff is pixelated if you zoom in enough. The new Luffy Yamato art looks really pixelated because they use, like, the Shonen Jump resolution of that image for some reason, and it looks, like, pixelated. They didn't redraw it. They just took that art and, like, Put it into OPTC and it looks weird. I tried Dokkan a long time ago. And I played it for like three days. And that was about it. I repeat treasure map keys and blitz hundred times. Every time it's the same. No way it's going to be different. No, there's some. No, but there have been Kizuna events that have been fun. There have been blitz events that you could earn points in a different way than other people that was still fun like there was blitz battles where there's three different fights each with different difficulties and you would rank for those individual ones so instead of fighting the hardest one and ranking in the hardest one i ranked in the easiest one and i got rewards in the easiest one and that wasn't like 
Like, that was different. It was unique, and it allowed me to, like, strategically pick, like, how I wanted to rank. And I high-ranked. I got, like, top 100. So, nice is good game. I mean, it's a gotcha game. So, meh. Like, for me, One Piece Treasure Cruise is, like, a 6 out of 10. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe a 5 out of 10. And that's nostalgia talking. Realistically, it's, like, a 3 out of 10. Art's cool. Animations are cool. Live service model is trash. Awful. Genuinely awful. Dokkan is an awakening characters. It's actually playing with those characters. Yeah. I mean, that's a small feature that I wish OPTC had is that powering up units was linked to being able to use them, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I kind of trust Ferritus's outlook because he has been playing Dokkan for a long time. El Chato says the same thing. He's been playing Dokkan for a long time. Like, when people... When you ask people what they like about Dokkan, it's never like, the game is hard. The game is difficult. It's interesting. It's like, I like Dragon Ball. And it's super easy. And you can level up all your characters really easily. Like, the barrier of entry is low. Would I stream Dokkan? No. I don't even want to play Dokkan. I don't have a Dokkan account. I don't even have Dokkan installed on anything. I played it for like a week. Years ago. It was some Vegito Sugo Fest. Or not Sugo Fest, Dokkan Fest. Whatever they call it. And I pulled Vegito, and then I was like, this is neat. Wow, he deals so much damage, and then I got bored of it. It's not easy, because that would also get boring. I don't know. From what I've seen of Dokkan, it looks really easy. Is Vegito Legend? They've made like probably six Vegito Legends, if I had to guess. <laughs> like, Dokkan just pumps out Vegito and Gogeta Legends all the time. Dokkan is for the most part easy, except for the latest content. Oh. Yeah, I definitely played well before that stuff was even. A thing. But at least, like, the hardest Dokkan content is harder than OPTC, but for the wrong reason. Is it just like Grand Voyage, where you just need dupes of legends? They actually stopped doing Vegito and Gogeta. Yeah, when I played, they were just pumping out Vegito and Gogeta units. <laughs> Like, a lot. It's like Grand Voyage? Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, I think OPTC's Grand Voyage is kind of weird with how difficult it is. Because it's not like the mechanics are difficult. It's like... They really put it right at the cusp of being unobtainable for most teams. And just barely attainable for the right team. Like barely beatable for the right team. So, I can see that. I don't know. OPTC needs kind of like a wholesale improvement for me to really enjoy this game again. Right now I'm just running through the motions. <laughs> I also had stages limit to classes. Isn't it like tags or categories? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. I think Dokkan's 
uh, category system is interesting, but it definitely feels a little out of hand sometimes because I don't know, the most powerful characters are going to be like Saiyans all the time. It's like what OPTC is doing where Free Spirit and Driven is like the powerful units and then everyone else just kind of gets nothing. Is Dokkan the same company as OPTC? The same company publishes it as a game, uh, but it's a different development team. I know OPTC is done in-house. I don't know if... I assume Dokkan is also done in-house. Yeah, it would have to have been done in-house because Yoshi came from in-house and Yoshi used to be on Dokkan. So yes, they're both made by... made, developed, and published by Bandai Mobile. Bandai Mobile. They released a Bulma who's number one. Well, that's good. Dokkan's categories just pull things out of their ass. Yeah, I've seen some of the categories. It's like movie character, and it's like, okay, any character who has been exclusively in a movie. Got it. Like, which saga they appeared in. Yeah, how does that work for characters that appear in multiple sagas, but not in the sagas between them? Piccolo from the new movie is second or third. Yeah, that's something OPTC has been touching on lately, but not really doing proper, is having supporting cast have strong characters. Because before it's like, oh, you pull Luffy and you win. But now it's like, oh, this Nami is extremely valuable. This Robin is extremely valuable. Uh, every six months we get a new Yamato unit that is stupid op overpowered. Stuff like that. I would like to see less in, uh, less uh, popular characters get legends as well. Like, uh, I don't know, like if from this Wano event, like Momonosuke deserves a legend. Like child Momonosuke before the raid on Onigashima, like he deserves a legend, but they didn't do anything for him. Uh, Yasui deserves a legend. I think a lot of the um, Beast Pirates could have had rare recruit units that never got any. We Instead, we only got Hold'em and Speed. The two Beast Pirates to get rare recruits that aren't higher rank. So, Ultimate Gohan. Oh yeah, because he's... <laughs> He's a uh, god. Or even is his categories. Categories, hybrid Saiyans, full power, transformation, movie, heroes, Goku family, siblings bond, Kamehameha, bond of master and disciple, exploding rage. Connected Hope, Miraculous Awakening, <laughs> Battle of Fate, Bond of Parent and Child, Earth Breed Fighters, Superheroes. I'm surprised there's not one for like Z Fighters or like Earthling. Well, I guess Earth Breed Fighters. That's so, so many. Superheroes. What is Siblings Bond? Is that like Gohan and Goten? Oh, and like the androids, that makes sense. Why is Vegeta in there? Why is Mercenary Tau in there? <laughs> what the heck? Why is Vegeta in there? Is it because of Vegeta and Goku? Then why are there no Gokus in here? Why is there a bunch of Vegetas under Siblings Bond? Vegeta has a brother? Why is Tapion in here? <laughs> what? <laughs> Does Tapion have a brother? His brother's name is Tarble? <laughs> Does Tarble have a Dokkan character? Or did they just throw it in there for fun? 
Because that's what it seems like. Man, that's hilarious. Does this character have a brother? If so, give them siblings bond. Or a sister, I guess. I didn't even know Mercenary Tao had a brother. Oh. Who was Tao Dragon Ball? Even has spin-offs as characters? Yeah, OPTC tried doing that once. Relatives, Master Shen is his brother. Oh, I forgot that Master Shen was his brother. Man, that's funny. The made up fusions between characters also exist. Oh, from the other Dragon Ball game? Man, their fandom page is so decorated. Like, they've got a bunch of, like, animated images and stuff like that. That's pretty funny. Yeah. I mean, at this pace, Bandai's probably going to be making a Xenoverse 3. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Xenoverse 3 is probably going to happen. Sooner rather than later. Although, I think they just released a new DLC for Xenoverse 2. But who knows? One Piece biggest weakness is trying to stay true to One Piece. Yeah. I'd agree to some extent. Uh, I want Goku in One Piece Treasure Cruise. I want a Persona 5 collaboration in One Piece Treasure Cruise. I want like... God, what else? What collab would happen? I mean, even if it's like another Bandai thing, like a Tekken collab in Ban in OPTC would be sick. Um, stuff like that. They didn't they announce a new game, Tenkaichi Four or something. I thought it was a remaster of one of the Tenkaichi games. Or Tenkaichi. Tenkaichi Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 4. Yes. Although, for some reason, I can't find the trailer from Bandai. I'm only finding other people posting the trailer. So... I don't think this has been announced. Or have they announced it, but they've announced nothing else about it? Because I think that's the case. They've announced it, but there's nothing else. They don't know what consoles it's going to be on. They don't know when it will release. They don't know anything. I mean, they can still work on DLC and... Uh, like a new game. Like, they have multiple groups of people working on stuff for Dragon Ball. They released that Dead by Daylight clone. You go, see ya, Diogo. Hope you have a good day. Yeah, it was fun chatting. Good luck grinding, thanks. Yeah, it's a shame that the Dragon Ball, uh, Breakers, or whatever it's called, game. The, like, Dead by Daylight clone didn't do well. 
The Dragon Ball animation team had nothing to do, so Mo Toei moved them to One Piece to ruin the anime. No wonder all the uh, auras are showing up now in One Piece. Is Super taking a break? Is Super's anime on hiatus or something? For half a decade now? Yeah, I guess that's true. They've only been doing movies. I haven't watched anything from Super or read anything from Super. It'd be my first time reading One Piece, or reading Dragon Ball if I got into it. Because I watched Original and Z, and then I never watched GT. The Gloku Black Art arc was decent. Yeah, it looked like a couple of the arcs were good, but I don't know. Every time I hear an interview with Akira Toriyama, he's always like, I wanted Dragon Ball Super to be goofy, like the original Dragon Ball. And then you look at it and it's like, no, this is just Dragon Ball Z with, like, filler episodes. Canon filler episodes. So, like... It's not exactly like the original Dragon Ball. The first 30 or so episodes are recaps of the movie. Oh, God. Toei must have spent a whole lot of money animating those, he said jokingly. Like, I bet they reused the entire movie in those episodes. I would not be surprised. They didn't even recycle, they made it from scratch and it looked bad. Oh god. Why didn't they just reuse the movie's assets? That's actually baffling why they would do that. Like, didn't Demon Slayer do that? Where they just reused a bunch of the scenes from the movie? It's like, it works out. Like, it doesn't look horrible. Demon Slayer actually improved on the movie with the TV episodes. Yeah, like... They were given more time to polish those scenes. So, like, it wasn't terrible. And it wasn't like they made it from scratch. They probably just, like, oh my god. Yeah, this looks like a fan drawing of Goku. That's not just the still frame making it look bad. He actually looked bad for that episode. Yeah, that reminds me of how Seven Deadly Sins fell from grace. I say fell from grace, but um, I'm going to be honest. Seven Deadly Sins was never super well animated. It was kind of just there. Like, the animation in Seven Deadly Sins was okay. I was never super impressed by it. So. Best part to come out of Super was Goku's new form. What? Which form? He got like seven. Ultra Instinct or whatever. I mean, the theme song for Ultra Instinct is definitely really good. But, I don't know. I miss when Goku's transformations, or like Goku's power-ups were from like finding new moves. And not just, I have a new transformation that makes me god. Or something like that. Like, I don't know. It just feels like an easy way out.
enjoyed him looking more basic in the pre-mastered Ultra Instinct. Yeah. I kind of miss when Dragon Ball was a Kung Fu anime. And not a sci-fi Kung Fu anime. <laughs> like, I don't know. When it was just a Kung Fu anime, it felt so... Like... Grounded. Give me Hunter Hunter. Yeah, good luck getting Hunter Hunter. Wasn't it supposed to not be on hiatus anymore? And then now it's... Let's see. Hunter Hunter. Da -da -da -da. Do I keep up with it at all? I said I would start reading it when they stopped going on hiatus every couple of months. Um, I mean, I'm caught up with the anime. <laughs> like, that's it. Manga. Chapter releases. Oh, they've released a couple chapters in the last... Uh... Oh, it looks like they haven't kept up with this. They've been on hiatus since, like, what, January, it looks like? The manga is currently in an arc that's only meant to set up the Dark Continent. Oh, I don't remember what Dark Continent is. Remember the last episode where he talked to Gon about more to explore? Oh yeah, he was referring to the Dark Continent. I know there was that where he was like, Hey Gon, you're just a small fry, lol, lamau. Uh, and then uh, Karapika went out and was like, what if I started murdering people? And then that's all I remember at the end <laughs> is Karapika was like, what if I started murdering? So the tree only being a sapling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, Hunter Hunter was such a fun ride. I should rewatch it. Love how the author openly declared that he finds gone boring. Yeah, that's a pretty hot take to say that your main character is boring. I mean, that's probably why he's dropped the series as much as he has. I don't know. Has he done anything since Hunter Hunter? Works. Akuten Wars. 
uh, a two chapter manga. So yeah, he hasn't done anything. Yeah, I think that's probably what happened is he just lost interest in the story. Like he just doesn't care about the characters anymore. Leorio was easily the most interesting character, and he's like, yeah, he's just some dude. So. The others were out there reaching insane levels while Leorio was out there just studying. Yeah, there was so much promise in Leorio. And then they were just like, he's just some guy. He just wants to be a good guy. So. What are you gonna do? Defense up? I don't think you remove defense up, do you? No. Damn. Hey. Nice. Still poisoned. Too bad that won't matter. All because I forgot to use Raju special. And now he's gonna hit me for 5 trillion damage. Oh, no. Okay. even the, with the gimmick on the chopper booster. He does something when the enemy is poisoned. Oh yeah. Yeah, I have no clue. <laughs> I have no clue. The only poisoner available is Reiju, so I assume like it was supposed to be Reiju or something, but like the Reiju that they boost is not that useful. Wow. Flat 1,000 recovery. Twenty-five. <sighs> I'm just going to use a gem. Although he's probably going to kill me again. Oh no, I'm good. Maybe. We'll see. Okay. Whatever. I'll take it. Maybe Queen should have been a poisoner, but they scrapped that part of the kit. I don't think so. I think they wanted some sort of Reiju or something. 
I don't know, maybe they'll finally release the Beppo from Film Red and the Law from Film Red. I don't know. And it could just be that Chopper was supposed to be for some other event and they just threw Chopper in. I don't know. I mean, Queen not having some sort of poison or burn kind of feels like a missed opportunity to play with, like, funny haha -ha memes. But Bandai hasn't really done much funny haha -ha memes other than, like, every Sabo uses burn and every Ace uses burn or it's junk like that. Just overloaded his kit for no reason. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like they were like, just throw everything at Zoro at this point, because people are going to be out of gems. Bong clay mechanic for your queen. Oh my god, that would have been so much more interesting. Bong clay mechanic for queen would have actually been kind of neat. Because it plays with the idea that queen is a copycat. <sighs> so many missed opportunities. I'm actually, I'm upset that poison sockets don't make poison orbs count as matching. Or changes poison orbs into matching orbs. Poison sockets should do that. I don't know why they don't. Genuinely surprising that they don't.
Like, I don't even understand what I'm supposed to be doing for the poison in general. Like, it feels like just ignore the poison. They don't even give you, like, a difficult poison. It's just some normal poison. I guess they want you to use some sort of support to get rid of it. But it's still so weird. There's a Final Fantasy gacha game. Yeah, it's like a Grand Exodus or something like that. I remember Sekopoko used to play it, I think. But that was... Sekopoko also played, like, every gacha game. So... Didn't notice it was a gacha years ago. Yeah, no, it's pretty old. There's a lot of mobile Final Fantasy games. I think they've had like two or three gachas. I've never played it. Nah. Not that interested in gacha games. I don't go out of my way to try gacha games. Like, if I ever am done playing OPTC, I'm never playing gacha games again. I think it used like the a similar combat system to Final Fantasy 7 or something like that. So but it was gotcha. Like similar tap uh turn-based kind of with a speed stat. I forget what term that's called. I looked it up. I forget already what the term is for that kind of genre. Yeah, but with all Final Fantasy characters. Which is funny because it's the only place you see Final Fantasy characters crossing over, other than in Kingdom Hearts. Although, what Kingdom Hearts character, or what Final Fantasy characters other than Final Fantasy VII have been in Kingdom Hearts? I'm pretty sure only Final Fantasy VII has been in Kingdom Hearts. It seems like a missed opportunity. Oh, I guess there's some from Final Fantasy VI, but yeah, the vast majority of them are from seven. Oh no, there's some from eight and nine and ten. So I guess there's some from six to ten. They should just commit, have more characters. Don't know if it's free to play friendly in 2023. Uh, rule of thumb for gacha games is that they're basically not free-to-play friendly. 
like there is no free to play friendly gacha game. Tregalia lost. Yeah, that's the issue with free-to-play friendly gacha games is that they close down <laughs> like Dragalia Lost. That is the issue with free-to-play friendly gacha games. Yeah, free-to-play friendly gacha games are just not uh, profitable. Unfortunately. Enjoyed a Zerlane's approach though. That was another one I haven't tried. Gotcha, but generous rates and moneymaker are the skins. Yeah. I wish there was a gacha that was more skin oriented. Some icon. How I know it. How I know what. That it's not free to play friendly. That's just how gacha games are. If a gacha game is free to play friendly, then there's going to be a bunch of people not spending on it. And you need whales for your games. Like, that's it. You need whales. If you don't have enough whales supporting your game, your game is just going to get shut down. Like, that's it. Azur Lane has a daily to do three singles that you get compensated for. That's wild. That's actually wild. I didn't know that. That's kind of nuts. But yeah. A Final Fantasy, I know there's like equipment in there, and equipment is obtained through gacha, and characters are obtained through gacha, and it's like, mm, that's a bit too much. Like, everything's obtained through gacha in Final Fantasy. So. Did I see Grand Cross, though? No, what happened to Grand Cross this time? The only time I see Grand Cross news is when you guys tell me. Virtual K-pop idol crossover into anniversary announcement introducing the first legendary rare grade character. Oh, God. They're trying to be Fortnite. <laughs> They're trying to just cross over with random junk until they become popular again. That's that's what's happening. They're just like throwing stuff at a wall and hoping it sticks. Las Vein, LR, Meliodas will take like five weeks of grinding for the big whales. Or over half a year for regular players. <laughs> nice. I love spending half a year grinding for one unit. That will probably get power crept by that time. I mean, to be fair, the Seven Deadly Sins gacha game has better animations than the anime. Best part is you can't even save material. You need a few hundred and the storage is capped at a hundred. Hey, they have limit break problems. OPTC fixed that problem real quick. And by real quick, I mean it took them like three years. 
I, it still baffles me how long it took for them to increase limit break material storage. Like, genuinely, it took them so long to increase it. It's like people were maxed out within one treasure map. And they were like, yeah, this is good. I don't know. I feel like in an ideal world, One Piece Treasure Cruise could be salvaged if they got a mostly new team. I think there are some good design in terms of character designers in OPTC and the format of like Treasure Map and Kizuna and eh, maybe not Kizuna. Kizuna is kind of rough. They should just reformat Arena, or not Arena, Coliseum, into Kizuna. Thoughts? Um, anyways. Like, there's some good stuff, but I think they just need to rebuild the game from the ground up. Because, like, there's so many old things that just need to be fixed, and they're just not fixing them for some reason.
I should move Kaido. So that way I can at least use his tandem orbs. Or King Queen Super Tandem. I'm getting to the point where I might not be able to beat this fight soon. I hate that the mini bosses scale in HP and stuff.
Nice. Oh my god, another stamina refill. Road to 20 million. Tell me about it. I mean, if I really tried, I could probably hit 20 million. Do I want to hit 20 million? Eh. You know what would be more useful than 10 tablets? 150 small limit break materials. Remove the 10 tablets. Just give me more limit break materials. Oh my god. Put me right at the last spot.
I guess eventually they're probably gonna give us like a versus Kaido that will probably have Luffy as a requirement for like a super tandem or a super special or something. that soon I'm running out of friend captains
I'm surprised they didn't add any of the alternating ink as stuff for ranking rewards. Actually, I'm not surprised. Oh my god. I think that's fine, but god, that's dumb. Yeah, I should be fine. Tyson. Just farming up treasure map.
How long have I been saving up? Got hit with ads. Oh wait. back all right i've been saving since july last year ish although i had like 800 when i started saving what am i saving for a uh, bandai to fix their game which at this point is never gonna happen and i could have pulled for uh, exploiting the Sugafest bug, but they fixed it already. When the bug hurts the bottom line, then Bandai fixes it. This team is not looking good. Well, then that's impossible. I mean, it's not impossible, but yeah, I'm going to be sitting on these gems forever. What nav level am I at? About like 20. I'm not that far in. And I've died once. For Banda to fix this game, it's improbable if you want to continue this game for that many more years in the future. Yeah. Like, they would need major uh, administrative changes because what they're doing right now feels like they're kind of just like done with this game. How am I doing? I'm alright. Getting by. I think they're going to make the same mistakes that were made with Naruto and Ninja Blazing. Uh, I don't know what mistakes Naruto did. I just know that Naruto had to shut down eventually, but I don't know.
It became super greed in the game by re-releasing characters with low stats to pull for them. Like it was even worse than OPTC. I don't think they'll get to that point. I think OPTC has found a spot where they can put in the same amount of work each month and they should realistically keep earning more and more. Like they should be steady, theoretically, but if more people got upset with them and stopped pulling, maybe we would get significant changes, but I don't know. What am I saving up for? Uh, nothing. I just have these gems. They ignored a lot of the player base for the majority of the game. Yep, but PTC has been doing that for a good amount of time. <laughs> these chests don't even give me, or these point spots don't give me that much. 15,000 points, whoop de doo I guess it adds up. If In total, it's probably given me like 500,000 points just from these point spots. Have I seen any alt ink arts in my runs? No, I have not. Unless I got it when I wasn't paying attention, but no, I don't think I've gotten it. I don't think anyone's seen any ink uh, alternate items, like at all, genuinely. Saw something on Twitter that Japan has been seeing them for really, really, really low rates while ours are non-existent. I think I've seen golden tablets on Japan, but not the ink art. That's what I heard. Is that Japan is getting golden tablets, but not the ink art. unlucky
I need a reset soon for friend captains.
Nice. Actually, out of friend captains. Oh. I should get a standing desk. That'd be nice. Do I have any supports that would remove poison that I could put on this team just for fun? There's a chopper that supports Wanda and Carrot that I should have. They have a support that actually matters. 
Wow, none of my team has stat boosting supports. They all have actual supports. I am struggling. I've only gotten like 2 million points. I guess I am playing slow, but still. For once, I actually missed the stamina refill, but it's okay. The next map is the secret map, and that will get me back up to 200. Killing me, game.
Alright, let's do my 5 million ticket and my 4 million ticket. Okay, garbage. Not even the good hydrogen. Oh no, this is the good hydrogen. That looked like the side version for a second. Am I gonna pull for Zoro? No. No. <laughs> I would have been open to it in another world, but with how Kizno looks, no. Like, Kizno looks awful. So I'm just not gonna bother. Yeah, in another world where Bandai is nicer about the game. But 
with how difficult it looks like Kizuna is, like, how many rewards we're gonna get from Super Boss. Like, we're gonna get 100 tickets from Super Boss for every clear. It, it, they are removing the 1.1 multiplier, so, like, what's the point? Genuinely, like, what's the point? Okay, yeah, I'm definitely getting max stamina now. be back if I'm still online. Well, if I'm here, I'll see you then. Thanks for stopping by, Tyson. Time for janky ass team against Momonosuke. No food orb look, huh?
like one food orb that entire time? Jeez. Now I do stuff. Man, I am fighting to stay awake right now. I think I might end stream in like 30 minutes. I'm only getting 250,000 from intrusion. Man, that's really rough. I land on the spot and I get this. Damage reduction tablets. Woo. 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 Damage reduction tablets. Man, so good. It's ridiculous. What a way to go out with a bang. And now I'm rolling a bunch of ones. Yeah, this is kind of ridiculous.
Like, they could have just made that spot a guaranteed golden tablet. And I think it would have been fine. Because there's three of them now. Like, just give us that option. Or just make it so that all crystal chests on the secret map have a chance to be... Uh a golden tablet because there's not many on the secret map there's like five like there's not a lot of crystal chests that you can get on the secret map so like I don't know
should have just gone straight. Man, I wish Kaido had better supports. What's the mastery level up on treasure map mean? So, uh, limit break is, um, each level is technically raised by giving the mastery potions. So you earn mastery points passively by using characters in treasure map. On certain fights, you get more points in mastery. So for each mastery level, you can unlock another level of limit break. So you're just getting passive limit break unlocks. You still have to purchase them, but you're getting them unlocked. Yeah. Which is nice for people starting out. If you're in like East Blue and stuff, you can just throw a bunch of units on there, get uh, mastery points so that way you save on mastery potions. But once you get to late game, it's pretty useless.
Yeah, for some reason they called that Mastery instead of something else. Like, they could have called Limit Break just Mastery. So... What nav level am I? I think 24. Not very high. I haven't been able to play all that much this treasure map. Like yesterday I was out with family, the day before that I was driving most of the day, so unfortunately I haven't had a lot of time to play treasure map this time around, but hey, it's like whatever. I should be able to hit 10 million if I wanted to. I don't know if I'll be able to hit 20 million. Only at 18. I mean, 18 is still pretty good. I think I need like 46 in order to get 10 million points, which doesn't seem right. But we'll see. Or maybe that's for 20 million. That might be for 20 million. Only got 2.2 .2 million. Yeah, the boosters you have makes a big difference. That's why it's nice having just a lot of units and a lot of different units, so that way you can just run random units that happen to deal with some of the stage mechanics and stuff like that. Like, this Luffy is boosted, and I only really use him because he's a Luffy. For his support, I think. I just don't use him at all. Like, he's just there. So that way I get the additional effects from Zoro. Like, that's a... Man, I'll even have a level up lined up at this rate. Twenty-four, six million, but I lost once, so I've done like twenty-six runs. But my loss put me back to. Free box base when we're stuck at 3300. 
just make the box like honestly if they just gave more characters limit break expansion it would solve my box space issue like older rare recruit units having limit break expansion would just solve my box space issues completely we haven't had more box space in years like genuinely years since before like gem valley you're getting times 11 every fight oh you're on east blue that's pretty nice i mean quality of life died when we got like a year and a half worth of updates and none of them were significant quality of life the quality of life around ships was just to rework ships which i don't really call quality of life elduva thanks for the follow appreciate it first treasure map well you're doing pretty well Honestly, East Blue isn't a bad choice because it's easy and you can get the character because most of the rewards suck anyways, <laughs> which is really unfortunate, but it is what it is. Which are you spending your green tickets on? Uh, those are the Pirate King Adventure tickets, right? I would get Super Cola and Gems, probably. Alternatively, I mean, if you're brand new, I don't think you really need anything from that shop other than Super Cola and Gems. Because you should get all the straw hats from rookie missions. And you should get enough dupes of them to level limit break them. So I don't think you need to buy any characters right away from Pirate King Adventure. I think buying just gems and super cola is going to be the move for you. Not new new, but you just came back to the game. Well, if you have rookie missions... Like, if you haven't done your rookie missions, or you're sitting on those dupes for those characters, then that's probably the best course of action. You're on intermediate mission. Uh, I don't know when you get the dupes of the straw hats. I thought that was in. It might be in master, but I, I'm probably wrong. But the most important one is Luffy. Uh, Sanji and Zoro, you can farm dupes of. You got all of them max, but Jimbei and Luffy. Max level limit break as well, because level limit break is the important one.
Level limit break fed them the nine dupes. Okay, then yeah, you're good. Uh, other than the Luffy, but Luffy, I wouldn't stress too much about it unless you really needed him. But you've got like, I don't know, a couple of days at least, like two weeks until the shop on Pirate King Adventure resets. Actually, it's probably more than two weeks. It's probably closer to three weeks. And then you can just wait until right before it resets to buy your gems and super cola. So that way, if you need to buy like Luffy or something from that shop, then you can. And then if you don't need to buy Luffy, then just spend it on super cola and uh, gems, right? My dad just tried to scare my dog. I, I heard my dog, my dad yell from downstairs trying to scare my dog. All right. Nice. Need to complete the mission to see if there's another one after that. Yeah, there, it should tell you. I should tell you how many more missions you have, or at least like what percentage of missions you've done. The amount of points you get from Marco really isn't that great. I wish they would give you like boss battle amount of points and not like kind of halfway between. The damage on this stage is really not good. Should you use something on Zoro? Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Unless you're planning on trying to beat Kizuna at a higher level. Like... I would not put too much stress on it. Swap. I always have to remember what I'm doing with these teams because the order that I do stuff is actually important. Heard he goes good with Luffy, Yamato, and Sanji. I mean, he's clearly designed to work with them, but that doesn't mean you're going to use him with them a lot. There's not a lot of Perfect Storm 
events where you will have the opportunity to use all three of them at once. Like this Kizuna is probably going to be one of the only times that you might be able to do that. Even then, I don't think you will be able to. <laughs> I think these fights are really, really not built for using them together. But on paper, yeah, they go well together. But in like two months, none of these characters are going to be like boosted on treasure map or anything. So you won't have a reason to use them all that much. They won't be boosted on treasure map. They won't have like stat boosts on stuff. So. They'll only be useful for Super Kizuna in the future. And Grand Voyage. And the occasional thing where you don't use boosters. I guess Pirate King Adventure. That's really it. Pirate King Adventure, Super Kizuna is where we don't use bo and Grand Voyage. Everything else we use boosters for. And like one of the big issues with Zoro is that you need to get Wano orbs and use them and the pacing of content in OPTC is like oh you the chance of you getting 10 Wano orbs on like a treasure map stage is basically zero because stage one you can't reliably stall on on treasure map or Kizuna so you're probably going to get none from there, and then you need to have them in stage 2, and stage 2, if you're using a team that synergizes, you're going to kill stuff on accident. Like, without even trying, you'll kill stuff. So, you might get maybe 5 Wano orbs in total. So unless there is some way that his gauge gets reduced externally, like, you're not going to be able to use, like, his powered up captain ability on treasure map or Kizuna or anything like that. Like, I think Sanji is probably the best unit to have long term out of the three between Luffy, Sanji, and Zoro, but people like Zoro, so if you like Zoro, why not pull for him? And then there's still the after party anniversary legends that we're waiting on. Because this is all normal anniversary, so. We're still waiting on whatever they plan to announce for after party. Straight down the middle, the best route on treasure map. Most of the time, yes. Uh. Technically, you want to go for the bento box, even if it's not a high rate of you getting it. Um. But going the short route 
record the normal maps is probably like going just straight down the middle for normal maps and then going for the stamina refills on bonus map is probably best. Unless you go for first. What do you mean for first? Like first place? Why first place? Because that's the only person we're going straight down the middle matters. Oh, yeah. Because they need to just go for speed. They're going to be spending gems anyway for the refills. Like. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're trying to beat the first place people in treasure map, go down the middle. Because that's the fastest route. But you should almost always go for the bento box. Like, it's a higher than, like, 25% chance of you getting the bento box. So, at the end of the day, it ends up paying for itself. I think it should be just over 25%. And then on bonus map, you just get an infinite amount. Like, you can fill up your stamina if you go on bonus map. went in a discord you're in sent a pick where you got 10x gold tablets for tandem yeah there's supposedly a spot that you can get them but i haven't gotten it yet but you're also supposed to be able to get the like uh new ink items that you evolve the luffy yamato with But no one's seen that yet. But man, 10 tandem gold tablets is kind of nuts. I'd be happy to just get one. Man. saving gems for a uh, better Sugo Fest. These Sugo Fests aren't that great, in my opinion.
but I don't think we're gonna get a better Sugo Fest. Like, I don't know. Compared to Sugo Fest we've gotten before, they're bad. But they're the best Sugo Fest we've gotten in like two years. <laughs> so. But it's not like by a lot. The only reason these Sugo Fests are better is because they have newer units on it. Like, that's basically it. There's no additional value. There's no uh, discounted multi pulls. There's not a huge high rate for. Uh, like getting legends or anything like that. Like, realistically, the Sanji banner should have been the banner that I pull on because I'm missing a lot of treasure map legends. But I'm also missing a lot of Kizuna legends and Rumble legends, so it really didn't matter what part I pull on. Wish you could be good at team building when you try your mind goes blank. It's a lot of trial and error. You gotta try stuff and fail a lot. And it helps talking with people. Like... My Momonosuke team, I think I probably would still be trying to build a Momonosuke team today. Unless Faradus had suggested just ignoring all the mechanics up to stage 4. <laughs> and just stalling it out. Because I don't think I can make a team that beats Momonosuke without stalling out some of his stuff. So, you just gotta find people who are good at it, learn from them, try stuff out, fail. That's what Garp Challenge is good for, is trying out new teams and like figuring out why they work and why they don't work. Uh, so, yeah.
Nice super tandem. Very useful. He was already dead, but it works out. Ooh. This feels like it might be close. What if I swap here? I already have an attack boost. Ugh. Huh. Definitely need more damage on this team. Yeah, Sanji's not gonna cut it very soon. I'm gonna have to rebuild this team soon. That sucks. died. <laughs> I did not notice. I almost died. I needed to heal a little bit more. Yeah, I need to find some alternate team for Queen. So I've currently got a Shanks crew captain. They're not even a 1.25 booster. They're just a 1.2 booster. Current Wanda with 
a despair reducing. Despair reducing support. We got Roger. He has a despair reducing support, but um, I have that weird Marco with white beard despair, and technically, oh no, he doesn't deal damage. And then bottom left was Cavendish Barto for threshold damage reduction. With an affinity boost, which I could level up a little bit. Yeah, there's a couple affinity booster things that I could do. Okay, so what do I have in terms of despair reduction? I guess I do use that on stage two, but I don't need to get rid of despair on stage two. I already have that on. Okay, Whitey Bay's there. Uta is there for a chain boost. Yep. Uta. Which is as good of a chain boost as I can get on any of these characters. Oh, except for Dofi. Ooh. Eh. Chain boost is whatever. Okay. Uh, I need Shanks crew there for chain attack down. Carrot Wanda deal with cooldown rewind. Cooldown rewind. Because the only alternative to Carrot Wanda would be... I mean, there is another Marco, but he only reduces cooldowns of Int Powerhouse. Yogoro is there, he reduces cooldowns by one. And his buffs are useless. not useful unfortunately would have been neat to use this Yamato use Yamato but it's just not useful in this situation like the timing of when I would use that character is just not helpful Luffy extended the duration of chain locks as well. That would have been nice. I am struggling to find a way to squeeze in a tiny bit more damage on this team. Maybe I replace Roger with something. Is replacing Roger really my only option at this point? he gets rid of bind needs six turns of bind reduction 
and he helps me carry over Oh, attack boosting? On the bonus map, a boat comes up on one of your spaces, and that's where you have a chance for ink or gold tabs. From what I know, it's the same spot on the map each time. That's what I have experienced and seen. Is that it's just one spot on the map. Six turns of bind. Six turns of bind. How am I supposed to get rid of six turns of bind? Saki I could use, but it doesn't really help me much at all. And also wouldn't get boosted by Sanji, so it's kind of pointless. Man, this is annoying. Is there any other threshold damage reducer? I think that's where I can get the most... value out of a replacement. How many turns of threshold? Five. Do I just put in Bonnie? Instead of Cavendish Bartow there. That gives me all orbs. I can still use the chopper there for affinity he gives me one extra dex character that sanji boosts marco marco your stats are abysmal I can farm that Marco. I can farm that Marco. <laughs> I could get him to level limit break 150. <laughs> uh, God, that would be funny. <laughs> oh my God, that would be so funny. You know what? Let's do it. Marco is giving me issues with damage, so I'll deal with the issues with damage. I'll take care of it myself. I only need to do two of these, because I already had two dupes of him done. So that should make my damage issues uh, better. I would just have a little bit less points. It's a difference of 
5.7 to 6.5. Oh. Oh, that's a big hit. That's a big hit to my damage, man. Only a million EXP. I mean, it's like a 12% damage reduction or er, point reduction 12.5 12 do I eat 12% point boost reduction for more reliable points yeah I think I do I don't want to risk screwing up that stage. I should probably also switch my ship out. I don't know what I would switch it to though. Yes, whale sharks. Yeah, guess whale sharks. This is so dumb that I'm... Wait, what? Oh, I need one, nine. I don't know why I thought I needed eight. I'm just dumb.
Now I can do the meme. I am definitely going to just feed in chunks of 50. Very fun. Damn. No super successes. Actually, I think I might have to end here. It's getting close to seven. <sighs> so I gotta go feed my dog. But ended off at 6.4 million. Might stream tomorrow if I wake up early enough of the rest of Treasure Map. Because it ends tomorrow? In like more than 24 hours, I think. Let's see. Bend. Yes. Yeah, more than 24 hours left of treasure map, so 
Honestly, I might make it to 20 million, but we'll see. Yeah, keep grinding. Keep at it. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Abandon all. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks to everyone who dropped a follow. Uh, it helps a lot. Abandon all. Thank you for following. Following is a great way to keep up with me uh, and my streams. Let's see if I can find someone to host real quick. Let me host Scotch. Why not? Uh, Scotch is playing CSGO. Thanks everyone for stopping by. I super appreciate it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one, everyone. Stay safe.